If you've never made merchandise as an artist and you want to start, it can be incredibly daunting. There are so many questions like, where do I start? What are the best websites to use for prints, stickers, keychains, all the things? How much do I sell my work for? What are the items that I need to actually set up my booth? I had all these same questions before starting my first booth and I am here to be your creative superhero so that I can help you figure out where you actually start. And this is coming from someone who recently just did this within the past few months as a first time merch and booth seller. So I have a very fresh viewpoint and opinion on what it can feel like and what it actually looks like to move into that. The inspiration I first felt when walking my very first ever artist alley was breathtaking and I knew that I wanted to try it myself. So I gathered a ton of info from artists and artist alley by interviewing them, asking them what they do, what they use. I've asked art friends on Twitch to start gathering all the info and I really want to share this with you. So the first question that I ran into was, how do I know what to draw for an artist alley? Initially, when I was coming up with a plan for what to draw, it was a really hard choice. If you've ever walked an artist alley, you know that there is so much fan art. Baby Grogu, I see you. Bro, Marvel's low key everywhere. Dude, I don't even watch The Mandalorian and I know just because of all the art I've seen at artist alleys. That's some good marketing. They did it right. You may even feel trapped like you have to draw fan art. That's kind of a feeling that I got when being surrounded in this pool of Marvel Marvel art and Genshin Impact art and I was like ah and it's true fan art is a great way to make connection and to pull your customers in initially because your customer might recognize a character and they're like oh my gosh yo Sailor Moon Queen let's go and then they'll walk over to your booth something to keep in mind though is if you draw something that you are not passionate about people feel that people know that and they have an intuition to understand that you might have just been drawing it for the hype or if it was trending so I really encourage you to draw what you're passionate about but let's dive a little bit deeper into how you balance the too. So I work full time in the global marketing department at a virtual reality company called HTC Vive. I'm their YouTube host and content creator. And we always keep an eye on trending topics to see what we can push out into the market and relate that back to VR so that it can get views or collect hype. And because trends are just a very strong strategy to have on social media or when marketing or selling your work. So it's really helpful to follow trends, but don't make yourself miserable drawing fan art just because you think it's the next greatest thing. Lean into the things you're passionate about. And if you notice there's something trending that you also really connect with as an artist, then I would say go for it, create it. So all this being said, following something that truly makes you passionate mixed with the trending hype and marketing of doing what sells well, I think it's great to find a mix of both. So start with some fan art of games or characters or manga or shows that you really like to start building up your, your items when you, you're starting with nothing. Throw some of your original work in there and then once you kind of build that base out, then you can go in and start looking at trending topics like, oh hey, the Barbie movie just came out. I know that was like forever ago. I'm just, let's go with Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka just came out. Let's be drawing some cute Timothy Chalamet. I think I said his name right. I actually haven't seen Willy Wonka either. Man, I gotta get to the theater, boy. I haven't seen anything. And it's truly different for everyone what's gonna do well. I've talked to some artists in the artist alley where they're like, man, my Genshin fan art, top of the lines, doing so well. And other people are like, I drew some original art and it really sold well for me. So it's gonna be different and every con's gonna be different. Every time you think you know, you may not know and sales will just not go exactly as you plan. But that's why I kind of recommend a mix of all strategies. And then whatever is doing well as you start attending your first few cons, you can sort of lean into that direction and help increase your sales that way. So surprisingly, so far, for me, my original work has actually done the best. Although I have a lot more original work than fan art in my current inventory, so that kind of skews the data a bit because it's like, well, they have more of my original art to pick from than fan art, so you got to keep stuff like that in mind as well. What's specifically done really well for me is this French toast cube that I did as a digital painting study in college when I was majoring in game development with a focus in concept art. I made a ton of these cubes and they've actually been selling really well, and I just added them to my inventory because I didn't have a lot to start with and it was just some original work. And one of my friends who does artist alleys, he's like, yo, you know those cubes you make? You should totally do those because I think that's going to do amazing. And I was like, really? The cubes? And he's like, yes. And it's my best seller. So like, you just don't know. And people just love food. Food is very universal and pretty much anybody can connect with it. Keeping all this in mind, I want to assure you there is a way forward. So next, let's talk about coming up with a strategy when you're starting from zero. You have nothing. You don't even know what to put in your shop. You don't know where to begin. And it's like, you see all these people bring all this merch. How do you even start? 
part. So I'm gonna explain to you how I technically did this and show it to you. So first I grabbed my sketchbook and I actually drew out a little booth and what I imagined it to look like. This helped give me a visual plan of what I wanted to do without having to have the physical items or spending money to try and set it up. I could see a very clear visual path before purchasing anything or making any commitments. And I recommend three categories of merch to start with because there's so many things out there like pins, enamel pins, stickers, keychains, prints, bags, clothes. There is so much. The three that I chose because I felt that they were the easiest for me was prints, stickers, and keychains. And of course you can eventually branch out to do anything under the sun, anything you could imagine. In fact, I actually saw on Etsy the other day these like cute Sailor Moon like card case covers and I'm like, yo, that is a genius. That could be a super cool thing to sell. So you are always running into and finding ideas of more things that you can make that are unique or there's not much out there of or something that you just think you could do really good at. But the baseline is keep it simple. Don't overwhelm yourself. Choose things that are easy. I really recommend the print stickers and keychains route. And I have three great resources that I can recommend to you for how to order those and get those set up later in the video. Next, I wrote down a list of my favorite shows, games, movies, series, but to keep it simple and limit myself, I circled three of my favorite categories. After that, I chose three characters from each of those categories. So for example, from Valorant, I went with Jet, Fade, and Killjoy, three of my favorite characters. And with Genshin Impact, I did Layla, Zhongling, and Albedo. And the reason I took this approach is to have a wide variety of fandoms and characters to choose from, because when you're starting from nothing, you don't really know what people like of your art yet. Although I could see an argument for someone to start with a lot of characters from one genre, because if you have a few characters from one, people are gonna wonder where the rest of the characters are. For example, I have three Genshin characters, but people might be like, where is all these other characters? And the chances are that they resonate with any of those three may be lower. So I can actually see you approaching both. So I guess I'd say choose on what you think is best there, but I personally like the approach to kind of hit a little bit of each category as I wanted to kind of expand myself and see, you know, what are people kind of liking the best for me? So I can, so I can expand on that. And also what do I like drawing the best again? So I don't make myself miserable and start drawing fan art from stuff that I don't really care as much about. Like when I started doing my Genshin art, I was like, I love drawing Genshin characters. And I didn't know that and exploring and keeping that open mind really helped me connect with my creativity and what I like, which ultimately I think is arguably more important than even what you sell is just exploring yourself as an artist and continuing to grow and draw what you love. And for my Genshin characters, I actually originally was hoping to do Pokemon at first, but I ended up switching over to Genshin because I started playing the game in the middle of drawing these series and I felt passionate and inspired. Like right now I'm watching Sailor Moon and I think I want to draw some Sailor Moon characters next because that's what I'm feeling passionate about at this time. So you can also pivot to what am I watching right now? What am I consuming so that I can cr also create what I'm consuming to give it its full energy, love and dedication and passion to it. And Layla was the first Genshin character I drew because she's the first character I rolled. So I really had a special connection to her and that's what helped make me unique as an artist and my connection with that character and how I drew her. Plus what's not to love about stars and space? It's so magical. After that, I added everything to my Trello, love Trello, and decided what I wanted to be prints, what I wanted to be stickers, and what I wanted to be keychains. But the cool thing about stickers and keychains was they're actually kind of a duo pack for me. Whenever I made a sticker, I also made a keychain because the design and the chibi style was very similar to be able to be either a sticker or keychain. So that's also another way to boost and kind of double X your production time when you're just starting out your booth. And after you choose everything, you could just hop right in, start sketching, start drawing. I like to section mine out where I do three sketches at once, then three base colors, then three renderings. So I kind of batched the different stages where it's like all sketch, all base, all render. And that actually helped me. Sometimes I mix it up too. So again, find an approach that works good for you and what helps fuel your creativity. And I also stream all the content and merch that I'm working on over on Twitch. And if you're not following my Twitch, yo, you best go do so. So you can come hang out with me and we can chat. Next, let's hop into the actual production of the merch and what you should buy for your first booth. The sites I use for production are Vograce for keychains, Sticker Mule for stickers, and Cat Print for prints. If you'd like a full walkthrough on each of these sites, make sure to leave a comment below so I can know that that's interesting and work on that video next. After you've collected your merch, I recommend doing a mock-up of how you want your booth to look. I grabbed images off of Google and use a really great free program called PureRef to get a quick look for my booth. I actually had to do this because the first con that I got into was towards the end of 2023 and I wasn't actually planning on attending cons until 2024, but I happened to be in the right place at the right time. I got offered to go to a craft show type fairy festival. Not really an anime convention, but I got offered to sell my work there and I had one week. They're like, we have a spot and it's next weekend. And I was like, I was like, 
Bruh. Bruh. How do I prepare for this? And um, yeah, I, I did what I know best as an artist and I made references and then I got the things that I needed. So it all worked out. And one of my friends that I met at a previous artist alley actually gave me like all the info of things to help set it up as well. Man, shout out to him because he just helped me so much. And this friend also told me to just apply for cons. Like go for it before you're ready because once you get a date set in stone, it just forces you to get it done. And when that con happened to fall in my lap, it made me get it done and I'm so glad it did because now I have like 90% of the work done for cons going into 2024. It's the best piece of advice I heard hands down. And that same friend gave me some solid advice for what to start with the booth itself. Let's take a look at what he recommended and how it worked out. So let's talk a little bit about the items you actually need when building your booth. So this is a very beginner booth that I started with, something very basic and simple. If you go to cons, you'll see booths that have a lot more depth than mine did. This is my very first booth ever. I'm hoping to add a ton more depth moving into the future but here's what I recommend for the bare minimum at least for starting and you can get creative with your setup and these items. So for my first con I started with a four foot table. Conventions will typically have different spaces that you can buy. One of the smaller spaces can usually fit up to about a six foot table. Currently I started at a four foot table because I didn't want a big table when I didn't have too much merch yet and then I'd be trying to sell my work but have all this like empty space and you don't want your space to ever look empty. You want it to look very scrumptious and and, and like you have a lot to offer even if you don't so if you don't have a lot to offer i'd recommend starting with a four foot table if you're kind of in the medium zone i'd say a six foot i'm about to upgrade to a six foot table next and i'll keep you guys updated on that as well and then so forth you can get really big tables and the spaces just get bigger and bigger i haven't quite gotten to that level yet but when applying for cons keep an eye on the different tables that are offered so you can start to plan for what yours is going to be my four foot table was about 56.95 when i bought it i got it on amazon and my six foot table table was somehow cheaper, I guess a different brand, $30.99, which I'm upgrading to next. And there's a four foot option for this same creator. Maybe shop around a bit to see what the best deal that you can get is. Next for my table skirt, I got a six foot pink table skirt. So the nice thing is this will work with my four foot table and my six foot table. And you can get different colors. Again, look around and look up table skirt and see what's gonna fit your vibe. I went with this pink one, which was $24.99. And then of course the storage cube organizers. They come with 16 cubes, which is quite a lot. I have a ton of extra that I don't even use most of the time. These are super great and easy to put together and can be arranged in so many different ways. And they are about $50.99 for a pack of 16 cube shelves. Next I got the 60 piece color binder clips. It's more than enough. I have way too many clips now but it's going to be great again when I upgrade and start getting more prints. I'll have plenty and it's only $5.59 for the 60 pieces. Next, having some masking tape handy is super duper helpful. You can find some on Amazon, of course. I don't even remember where I got my masking tape, but it's just kind of sometimes one of those things that you have laying around, I guess. Next is bins for organizing. The ones that I got, I don't have a direct recommendation or price for you as I got these actually from my local Michaels, which is a craft store. You can check out Hobby Lobby as well. If you look up something like pastel cute bins or something like that on Amazon or whatever vibe you're going for, I'm sure you're gonna find something great that will work good for you. Next for bag sizes this is one of the trickier parts for sure because uh, it depends on the different types of prints that you have if you know what size your prints are going to be and if you don't know what size to make your prints I recommend checking out cat print which I mentioned earlier to see what sizes they offer because if you want to do a custom print size it might be a bit more expensive than one of their preset sizes so this is something I didn't even think about before I made my prints and I've had to readjust some of my prints to fit some of those sizes without having to go into a custom size and plus you might not find packaging that fits your custom size so going with some of the default ones you'll find on a print site like cat print is going to be really helpful to know some of your guidelines for what size your your prints should be so I actually got some really big bags at first that took up way too much space and I had to use like washi tape and fold it and the print was in there and it was all wrinkly <laughs> that was my first con you know you weird things and then you take notes and you get better and you find better equipment so that's just what I did the first time around but what I would recommend for the actual bag that you would order is a poly bag which is really good for prints. The poly bags I like to look for are the ones that have that little foldable like seal to make it look nice when it's packaged up. You're not always going to be able to find the size you need so packaging is going to be something you'll have to experiment with and see what works for your prints and your merch. 
And as for my stickers and my keychains, I use these really small plastic bags that I got from Michael's, again, my local craft store. But it also looks like you can get some of these at different sizes on Amazon right here. Next for keychains, I had some command hooks, some little command hooks that I actually got from the dollar store, but again, here's some more that you can find on Amazon. Honestly, this I will not be doing again. <laughs> this is something I probably will not be doing again, so I would recommend against it. It, it works for your, like, your first booth if you have everything flat, but like I said, for my next booth, I really want to work on adding more depth, and I'll probably have my keychains like dangling on some racks or something. I don't know what it's going to be yet. I'm still going to do some more research, and once more, I'll be happy to share the info with you guys, but if you're looking for something to start, think about something that can help you hang your keychains. I use these little command hooks. Just find something that's going to be able to hold it and maybe kind of like jewelry or be, be holding up and dangling so that people can take it off the rack or look at it and kind of see if they look like hanging off of something. And finally, a square reader. Mine was around $50 when I bought it. They're actually pretty affordable. You do need to make sure these are charged up, so make sure you bring an extra battery pack to just make sure that you're keeping it charged throughout the cons because con days can be long. Charge it fully up the night before. The square piece is super awesome. It, it's really made card transactions very easily accessible for anybody in something like a craft show or an artist alley instead of having these giant blocks, which you can get some giant blocks in like credit card machines, but Square Reader is honestly super great. People can lay their card over if they have that feature. I don't even know what it's called, but yes. And then they also have where they can stick their card in and get it chip read. The Square app is pretty intuitive and easy to set up, but if you're looking for a tutorial, please leave a comment below so that I I can do a full walkthrough and tutorial on setting up an inventory in Square and talk about some of the app features. And just for random extra supplies and things I'd recommend, scissors is always good to have on hand, sticky notes, pens, things you can write with, a little journal is really helpful. Those are some of the core things as well as please bring some food for yourself because con days are long, bring water, bring food, make sure you're taking care of yourself and you take regular breaks and ask one of the people nearby you to watch your table if you have to use the restroom, uh, if you have nice table neighbors that are willing to do so, of course. But that about covers all the basic things I bought for my very first booth. Your items may differ depending on what items you have, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what that is and what that looks like. With all your items added up, that's going to be somewhere around $300 in equipment and probably another $300 minimum for your table depending on the size you get so that's going to be $600. Bring at least $100 for food so that's $700 and that doesn't even count if you're flying or staying at a hotel so I definitely recommend with staying towards local cons first but remember as you start selling your work the goal is to make this money back and eventually profit. So I know it can be overwhelming and scary but if you save up some of this money to start working towards your dream I promise you it will be worth it. Next, let's continue talking about what my friend told me and some of the advice he gave me. And one of the key things that he mentioned was don't buy more than five pieces of that item. So five keychains, stickers, prints, but especially prints. I like to keep maybe 10 stickers, 10 keychains of each in stock because those are a little bit, uh, maybe something you'll give out more of, but prints probably don't keep any more than five for your first con to start, especially. Next is applying for cons. Local flea markets, I feel are super underrated. It can be really cheap to buy a table, and they're local, so not a lot of traveling fees. Now, to figure out what cons are actually out there and what you can apply for, I recommend this website that my f same friend told me about, and this shows all the cons that exist, and you can directly get a link to their website to apply, and I recommend checking these far, far in advance to when you actually wanna start applying, because some of them are open like a year beforehand, and they can close up quick. Almost all the time, artist alleys are immediately sold out and you get on the wait list. So I've been waitlisted a few times and it actually can happen pretty often that you'll get called upon even if you're waitlisted. So I would encourage you to apply even if you are waitlisted. Next, you'll actually be attending the con. Here's a list of things that I've learned. Some of the mistakes, some of the sillies, and there's probably many more to come. So as I mentioned earlier, my first con was actually a fairy festival, like craft show type thing. So not exactly my ideal target audience with anime and games, but it actually ended up being on my feet all day long. I was actually placed right in front of the entryway where people entered the con, which is a hot spot. And honestly, it was kind of pure luck that I got that spot. I got to talk to really cool people, which is actually one of my favorite parts about cons. I really recommend connecting with your customers. And I know not everybody is extroverted or outgoing or kind of able to have that easy flowing conversation. But if you are somebody who really likes to lean into that, do that. Connect with your customers, connect with the people passing by because those memories and experiences are unforgettable. So something I quickly learned that packing orders while talking to customers is not ideal because you're just like fiddling with bags and stuff and you're like, yeah, 
yeah, I'm so happy to hear how much you love Valorant. And you're like, it's just a disaster. <laughs> so if you can bring an assistant or a really good friend to be able to help you out, that is honestly great case scenario. Or what you can do, which is what I learned from my second con, was to do pre-packing for orders. So have five of a print ready, sealed, and good to go. Or have five stickers or keychains or whatever in their packages, however you want to send it out, ready to go. That's a really helpful tip. And another thing is a lot of people actually pay cash. I was thinking that some people might pay cash, but not as much as I expected. So I'd recommend going to the bank and taking out about $200 worth of cash. You can do a stack of quarters, pennies, you can get these little stacks and also taking a good amount of each bill out so you can give change for people who are paying in cash. And you don't need a big whole fancy cash register. You can actually just get like a little hip pouch that you can put around to keep on you at all times. Another thing that I had was a physical log book. This was pretty cool and I didn't realize until later that you can actually kind of keep track of the cash orders that you take with the Square app. So I also wrote down all the orders that I got, but honestly, keeping a physical and the digital version was actually kind of nice. I really enjoyed having both. You might end up doubling up on work, but if it's your first con and you don't really, you probably haven't really sold much yet, you might have a lot of downtime. So it's good to have just extra fun things like that to do to celebrate your small victories. And I definitely recommend having Venmo as well, because a lot of people actually wanted to pay Venmo. So set up your business profile in Venmo so that you're ready to take that as well so you don't have to turn away customers. You will also receive a tax paper for each state that you sell in. Not only each state, but each convention, you'll get an individual tax paper because of sales tax per the state. So make sure to look up on Google for whichever state you're going to what their sales tax rate is so you can either charge that additionally on top of your rate or you can also just charge flat rates and pay for the tax later on your own, but that'll be coming out of your own pockets. Totally up to you and I'm not a professional in advising anything regarding taxes, so make sure to do some extra research because I'm just giving the basic info of what I know and what I've done so far. And hopefully I did it right, otherwise I'm gonna be hearing it from the people in charge of tax stuff. Next, I recommend having bins with labels to keep stuff in. I even had like a working station behind my booth at a point where it would be like orders that are not wrapped, a wrapping station, and then a checkout station, which would include things like my business card, the square reader. So it's like these three different stations I'd have behind my booth. So try to be as organized as you can and you'll learn better ways to organize as you go through more cons but kind of start maybe with different stations and like keeping different categorized areas of your work. And make sure to add some extra decoration to spice up your table. I recommend using your brain colors. My brain colors are pink and blue. They're really bubbly, cozy, cute colors that I've developed over time while developing my character and my brand. Choose some colors that fit to you if you don't exactly have brain colors yet, or if you're an artist, you'll know what good colors go together and what you sort of resonate with. Try to lean into that. And also choose some objects of what could represent your character or your brand. For me, gems, flowers, pastel, like really colorful, beautiful, magical, whimsical uh, things really represent my brand. So I chose like flowers and fairy lights and I'm hoping to just even increase on that even more in the future. Really decorate your table to make it attractive to the eye so that people want to come over. Next is reflection post con. I've learned a lot with each con, so I recommend having a little notebook to take notes of what worked and what didn't throughout the convention. And not every con is going to be super successful. You may think this is going to be the best con yet and it's your worst one and you do terrible, but don't let that get you down. There are so many reasons why you could have been selling well or not selling well beyond your understanding. Of course, we can analyze it to a point and we can come up with good ways to sell our work better, but sometimes it doesn't always work. So I encourage you to continue to believe in yourself and continue trying and get feedback and advice from friends or other artists. Keep a close knit community of people who understand so that you can start moving in a direction to sell your work and just get better at your craft. A really huge win for me was all my original work actually being my best sellers. That was really important empowering and showed me that I could actually draw what I love and people will like it. It's always going to be different and your experience is going to be unique to what sells well for you and what you enjoy actually making. Next, I've attended two conventions so far and I actually recently got invited to be a celebrity guest speaker for Isekai Con in Utah, so make sure you check it out. The dates, if you want to come visit me and stop by my table, I'd super appreciate the support. And that's going to be my first like real anime convention to see how my work does because everything else has kind of been more craft show like. So then I'll have more information to bring to you gems so that I can share more with how that went for me. I also recently got into Game on Expo that's going to be in Phoenix, Arizona from March 15th to 17th. So make sure to check out that one as well. My biggest goal is to help continue providing tips and technical skills and tutorials on drawing and art and how to increase your craft and just be a really strong artist, entrepreneur, business owner, whatever that looks for, like for you. Whether you're developing a game, a webcomic, music videos, animations. I plan to help guide you in your journey 
through it all. So if that sounds like you, make sure you hit that subscribe button to help me reach my goals and hit that bell notification if you want to be notified when my new videos come out. And if you've stuck around this long, I'd love to hear a comment on what you're nervous about for your first convention, what you're excited about, or just what your thoughts are surrounding this topic in general. Make sure you check out my how to find inspiration for drawing video next. I'll see you next time on the Sapphire Star. Bye!